Good evening. It hasn't even been two years, but Target is saying goodbye to Canada. It's pulling the plug on its operations here, closing every single store. And if you think back to when they were talking about coming here in the first place, there was a whole lot of enthusiasm, right? Uh, but then the problem set in, and they never made any money. They lost billions. Target lifts us out of what might be expected and gives us something unexpected. Now, expected or unexpected, price was a big problem. When they launched in 2013, people expected great deals on great products, but instead, many considered the prices too high, and sometimes the thing you were looking for just wasn't in stock. I expected more merchandise. Um, I was very happy with the food, the market. I thought that was good. Um, but yes, I thought they were lacking in, in uh, linens and that type. Well, towels fine, but you know, merchandise. I thought I would get a better deal than anything anywhere else. But when I compared the prices, they were not that different. A little bit surprised given the amount of investment they put into it. So I came in today looking to see if the sales, the fire sales had started, but uh, nothing yet. Now, in its first year alone, Target lost almost $1 billion. And while the losses have shrunk since then, the chain is still losing money daily. So the company mapped everything out, trying to figure out at what point it might become profitable. The answer, 2021, six years from now. So 133 stores across the country, including 19 here in B.C., will close. Up to 17,500 employees could be out of work. Now, the company is hoping to set up a $70 million fund to make sure those, those employees get at least 16 weeks of severance. But that has to be approved by the courts since Target Canada is under creditor protection. In all, closing up shop in Canada is expected to cost the company an additional five to $600 million. Experts say in a nutshell, they overestimated the Canadian economy. If you're sourcing your product in anything like American dollars, you're selling it for loonies, you're already losing 16% right there. So unless you can match those good, tough Canadian prices, you're going to come in too high. What? So uh, we're going to talk about Target shutting down its doors with Carolyn Stern of Carolyn Stern Associates, mm -hmm. uh, your consultant. Yes. And so what do you think is one of the, the driving forces behind Target shutting down? I mean, we've heard a lot about price. Uh, we've heard a lot about stock. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it spread itself too thin. Mm -hmm. What do you think was one of the big reasons? I think the customer experience. I think Canadian customers want a good experience. We're savvy enough to, to know when we walk into a store, we want to have an experience. So when you walk into a Walmart, you get greeted at the door. Uh, you can stop and have a McDonald's if you want and have a meal. You can find your product on the shelf at a reasonable price. But at Target, you walk in, no one greeted me. Uh, you know, there was a Starbucks, so if I wanted to buy an $8 cup of coffee when I was trying to find my, you know, $3 mascara, um, <laughs> I just didn't think it hit the, they, they didn't hit their Target market, actually, with Starbucks and Target being together. Is it, is it as simple as, you know, just having a greeter at the door, though? You know, like, I wonder, what, what is this experience that you're talking about? I mean, what are some examples of, of, of companies, maybe, that, that you think do offer that that holistic experience for the consumer. I think IKEA would be a great example. You walk in, you you drop your kids off in the ballroom that they can play in. Uh, you know, you go shop, you can look at the, the, the furniture, sit, try it out, see how many people can sit in the couch, lie in, in as many beds. You've got your market hall there that you can buy your clocks and your and your um, lighting, etc. And then you've got yourself served. So it, it, you know, and, and the restaurant, which is opens at breakfast, so it's 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 an experience that you can come there and close with the store, and and, and it's an entire experience. So, you know, I, I look at the issues that Target had, and a lot of these issues are, are really big issues, right? Pricing, distribution, yes. that sort of thing. But if you're talking about experience, I mean, what, what are what are some simple things that they could have done, if any, right. uh, to to actually build that kind of experience right. for customers well I think you know as simple as you know Costco giving samples out or you know Sephora doing makeovers for girls mm -hmm. uh, you know I think that to give that value add to a customer so that they have something other than just going into the store you can't just be a big box store you can't just absolutely you can't open you cannot open and expect Canadians to come you know so so who do you think fills the void who do you think? Who do I think will f will fill in who, those yeah, spots? Who takes over? I think maybe a, some dollar stores might be uh, a good good fit. Maybe Winners, Marshalls, 
Um, I don't think you should be another Walmart, do, uh, you know, go into all these locations uh, because I think they're just going to cannibalize themselves like, like Starbucks did many years ago. Spread out spread, too fast. Spread too, too fast, too yeah. thin. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, it could be a variety of different, different big box. Fred Myers, maybe. Mm. Okay. Carolyn Stern, thanks for your time. Thank you.